I'm going to be making this birdhouse. I bought a piece of wood that's about six foot long. It's a picket fence panel, redwood. You can buy these in six foot, eight foot, four foot. You can buy them in half inch, three quarter inch, five eighth inch. You can buy them in cedar, which is very cheap, about four dollars for a board like this, or six dollars for redwood. You don't really want to do this in plywood or pine because if it's outdoors, it's going to get ruined within a year by the weather. So all you really need are the dimensions, a ruler, maybe an angle so you've got your 45 degree cut. I've got a pull saw with our hand saw. If you've got better saws, that's fine. Um, sandpaper and the directions. So I'm going to walk you through this thing. I'm going to show you on the screen right now what the project is and then we're going to build it. Um, these are the dimensions of everything, and it's mostly cut as you build. It's really cut as you build because it depends on the thickness of the board. So the first piece, you can see over here, that's the bottom piece. This is five and a half inches. Maybe if you got a six inch board, you'll do uh, six inches. Bottom is eight and a half inches. The roof is an eight and a half inch piece. The other side of the roof is an eight and a half inch piece minus the thickness of whatever board you were using and you'll understand that soon. We've got the front which is a 45 degree angle, a 45 degree angle. Each piece is your thickness of the board and four and a half inches long for that one and that one. And then we have um, the side pieces which are four and a quarter and four and a quarter. Now I've got my speed square here, first time I'm using it, uh, mostly because when I use a regular square my dimensions are always screwed up because of the, the unevenness of the board. So my first cut is going to be whatever this width is, and it's going to be 8.5 inches, and that is going to be my bottom piece. And then I'm going to be cutting it with the pole saw. My suggestion, unless you're really good at this, do not mark everything at once like this and cut them all at the same time. You have to compensate for the thickness of the saw blade and how accurate your saw cut is. So the first cut needs to be eight and a half inches. I'm going to put this against the edge. So you got a flat edge. And then I'm going to, since the ruler is 48 inches, I'm going to go 40 and then half an inch. And you know, most of this stuff, you always want to cut on the outside. You don't want to cut exactly on the line because you've got the thickness of the blade. So mark your line a little bit outward. You can always file this down later, sand it down. So I've got the width of the board plus eight and a half inches. That's going to be my first piece, the bottom piece. And then, the advantage of the speed square is you just put this against the edge of the board and mark it like that and you've got a nice even line to make your cutting easier. You can use, you can use a regular hand saw to cut this. I'm going to be using a Japanese pole saw. An American saw you would cut this way forward to do your cut with the pole saw the cut is going towards you. You'll get a nice smooth line. Make sure you don't want your board hanging over whatever you're going to be cutting on um, because then the piece is going to drop down and probably splinter. If you are lucky enough to have a power saw, which I do, but if you want to use a power saw you won't have to deal with this. You will notice with the pull saw, the Japanese pull saw, the blade is very thin, very narrow. You get an extremely narrow, very clean cut. The advantage of the pull saw, nice smooth cut. We do have a little bit of uh, splintering over here, but very little, and a nice clean cut. So I'm going to make two more of these, um, which are going to be for the roof. And remember, I said one of these is going to be the one. One is going to be the same width. Of the board and the other is going to be minus the width of the thickness of the board and I'll show you what that means in a minute. 
and all of this really depends on the thickness of the board you're using. I think the critical pieces, you'll see uh, if you follow this, most of it's going to work. There's only a couple pieces that the thickness is going to alter everything. So we've got the bottom piece, eight and a half inches, and I'm just going to line this up against the edge over here, and then I'm going to put a line, and then I'll do my other eight and a half inch piece, which will be the roof on the left, and then I'll do my other eight and a half inch piece, which will be the roof on the right, minus the thickness of the board. We'll see that in a minute. And if you've got a power saw, it's going to be a lot easier just to make your measurement, put a stop on there, and get consistent cuts. I don't have that, so we've got the eight and a half inch piece, which is the bottom piece. We have another eight and a half inch piece, which is the roof left side RL and then I marked again an eight and a half piece eight and a half inch piece which will be the roof right but remember we want this to be the dimension minus the thickness of the board so what you're gonna do is line this up figure out what the thickness of the board is and then you're gonna make a little mark over here and that is going to be the, uh, the thickness that you want. As I said before, if you have a power saw, this is going to be really easy to do. You just measure out everything, line it up, and you get a nice clean cut. With uh, doing it this way, you're probably going to be uh, doing what I'm going to be doing, which is sanding and getting things to fit and look proper. So we've got the first piece. As I showed you, the bottom eight and a half inches. This piece, the left side of the roof, eight and a half inches. This piece, the right side of the roof, which is eight and a half inches minus the thickness of the board. And we can already see that my cutting, I cut outside the line, so I'm gonna have to do some filing. Um, but that's okay, that is the thickness of the board that I was talking about. So, a little bit of sanding over there and we'll get everything even. So we've got the, uh, the bottom, the roof left, the roof right. The only thing that we have left is the, uh, the front, the back, which is going to have the 45 degree angle. And we've got the sides. And the sides are going to be a little more dependent on the thickness of your board. But here we go. We're going to go do another one of these boards we're going to measure seven and a quarter and then after we get the seven and a quarter we're going to go put a 45 degree angle on this thing from the center and I'll show you what that's going to look like. This is the first time using a speed square and I will tell you it makes a world of difference. I still wish that I had a power saw so I didn't have to mess with all of this but this is a critical thing right now. It all depends on how wide your board is. The other dimensions really don't matter that much. This one does. So if you bought a six inch board, it depends if you want to cut it down to five and a half inches or if you want to leave it at six inches and make all the dimensions work. This is a five and three quarter inch board. So five and three quarter from here to here. So I measured with the speed square um, half of, where did I do that? Half of, uh, how did I do this? There we go. So I took the speed square and I said half of five is two and a half. And then we've got six little markies over here. Six eighth inch uh, marks over here. So let's do three of those. So two and a half plus three gives me four, five, six, seven, two and seven eighths. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go from that peak over here and that's why the speed square is really neat I'm gonna go from the peak over here and I'm gonna get my 45 degree angle which with the speed square makes it really easy to do so I got my 45 degree angle this is gonna be for the roof and I'll be cutting the uh, peak of the roof by doing this and, you know, this is not rocket science. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate. You're just making a birdhouse. It's a little birdhouse project to have fun. 
to learn with. So that's what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a cut over here, a cut over here. And on one of these, I will be putting about, you know, they say about a one and a half, a two inch hole somewhere up in the front for the bird to get in. So let me do my other measurement on the board here. And then I'm going to cut them and I'll show you what it looks like. If you do not have a protractor or a speed square, this comes out to about four and a quarter inches. I don't know if you can see that over there. Four and a quarter inches, and uh, this is a little bit longer, but again, this is all going to be sand to fit. So you go four and a quarter inches or so to here, from here, and then go to the center and put your line. There we have the front and the back. And you can see my cutting is not the greatest, but it doesn't really matter. It's just fractional, so not a big issue. I can sand it if I want to. I can leave that alone. And so what I would like to do later is put a hole over here for the birds to get in. And I don't know if I'm going to put a peg over there. So the last two pieces are going to be, what are the dimensions? They're going to be the left side piece and the right side piece. They're going to be four and a quarter inches long by the width of the board. Last two pieces are the four and a quarter pieces. These are going to be the side pieces and I'm going to put about a one and a half to one and three quarter inch hole in here. I'm going to be making a whole bunch of different bird houses so I think I'm going to go out and buy a one and three quarter forester or however you pronounce that, a forester bit or a hole saw. I don't have a one and three quarters. They say somewhere between a one and a half to two inch hole depending on the size bird you want. So I'm just going to go with one and three quarters. We'll put that somewhere in the middle over here. And this is going to be all the pieces. Let me show you. We've got uh, the front piece. Did I label that? No. We've got the two. Let me zoom down. We've got the two side pieces the front piece and the back piece and then we've got the bottom the uh, what do we have we got the bottom and we have the roof and the roof is gonna go roof is gonna go like this so I think you can see it starting to come together now we're gonna have the roof over there and we're going to have the front pieces over there that I showed you and the side pieces. So I'm going to go get my saw, my hole saw. I'm going to sand everything down and I'll come back. That was a six inch board. More than enough uh, space to uh, mount a cross board on the back if you want to mount this on a house or on a tree or whatever you want to do. I'll be back. Make sure you do a thumbs up, subscribe, like, share, leave a comment. Donations in the video description are accepted. And click on the affiliate links if you shop on Amazon. Okay, I made a mistake over here. I want to show you what I did wrong so that you don't do what I told you to do. These are the uh, roof pieces. I said you wanted to make one uh, shorter by the thickness of the board. You don't want to do it lengthwise. You want to do it widthwise. So that is going to be this piece that I've got over here. I'm going to be cutting this piece a little bit shorter. And the idea is that when you, when you put it like this, when you put it like this, the idea is that when you mount it like this, it is going to be perfectly even on the bottom half. Okay, do not do what I did. Cut. Let me show you the boards, all three boards. This is what you want to do. You want to cut the board this way so it's not as wide. You do not want to cut the board shorter like I did over here. And what's going to happen is, let's get this should be left. When, the, when we have the house put together, we'll put the roof on and it will come out even because we have cut see we've got the full length here we've got this length i mean the full width here this width minus the thickness so it will all come out even when it's on the house like that
only tool that I bought was this Forstner bit. You could use a hole saw. I'm going to use two inches. I have finches around here. I don't expect to put this outside. I think I'm just doing this for learning experience on woodworking. But I'll be putting the two inch hole somewhere around the front. Maybe a little bit lower than the, uh, the line over there. If you don't want to spend 20 bucks on a hole saw, if you're not planning to do this except one time, just go make a circle, like a two inch circle, and then take small drill bits around the circle and uh, make a whole bunch of holes and then break this thing out and file it smooth. So I'm going to drill this hole and hopefully I will not ruin the, uh, the board. Then I'm going to sand everything down and then we'll go to the uh, video for assembly. You could buy a hole saw which is meant to drill a hole, a complete hole. A Forstner bit is meant to drill as far into the hole as you want to. You can go all the way through if you want or you can just go part way and um, have a flat bottom hole. This has got a little tip on there so it's going to make it easy for me to line everything up and I'm going to start drilling. I would suggest using a clamp on the uh, seahorse or table or whatever you're using so you don't have to worry about hurting your hands. Now it's time to put the birdhouse together. I'm going to be gluing it together. I will use screws on the top, roof pieces, so that I can open it up and clean the house if I ever decide to use it for more than a decoration. Normally you would put the back on first. Uh, I don't want to drill for screw holes and I don't have a brad gun and I'm worried it's going to fall out of position. So what I did is I put the square on the back to line up the back of the, the back piece to the bottom piece and then I'm going to take the side pieces, I'm going to glue them down and bracket them and then afterwards then I'll be able to push that together and line it up. And it's okay if there's a little gap in there, birds are going to need fresh air coming in there so that's not an issue. So I will be gluing all of this except for putting screws on the top. I will show you the progress. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on the side pieces first and then I'll put on the back and then I'll put on the front and then I'll do the roof. That is the left side. I think that's the left side. That's the uh, right side upside down 
you can see how much glue went in there because I was using a hand saw and my cuts were not straight. I wish I had a power saw. I'm not really sure I want to deal with that. Um, so it's filled up with lots of glue. I had clamps on the left and right and I noticed a huge gap so I put a clamp in the middle and it really pulled it together. So if you're using nails or brads this is going to save you a ton of time. With this setup over here I'm going to have to leave this here overnight. When it's done it's going to be stronger than if I was not using glue and if I was just using screw or nails. So wood glue is very strong. This is going to take me probably uh, three or four days to do indiv individual pieces clamping. I really wish that it was going to be easy to clamp the front and back piece on because when you've got the 45 degree angle up there it is not where are you going to put the clamps so by doing this I'm going to be able to clamp from here to the back so again I would rather put the back on first but it's not going to line up it's not going to be straight and this is going to make everything straight I'll be able to push the back on there fill up the gaps with glue and I'll be back tomorrow as we continue putting this beautiful redwood birdhouse together. A very simple project. A professional could probably do this in three or four minutes. Me, maybe a week. This is the latest and greatest. Um, my biggest problem is that I do not have 100% perfectly even cuts and the wood is a little bit warped because it is fence panel so not everything is going together perfectly you can see the big gaps of glue um, I am glad that I spent the extra money to buy this humongous $5.99 clamp at Harbor Freight otherwise I wouldn't be able to clamp the other side of this this is a cheapy couple dollar clamp from Harbor Freight. These are cheapy clamps from Harbor Freight. So what I did is last night I had one side mounted. I just mounted this side and then I decided if you have nails you don't have to deal with all of this or if you have screws but then you're not going to be able to glue it as easily I don't think. Um, I just wanted to get this thing done. I, I can see that everything is way off. The, the back and the front are totally off. Uh, so all I really have left now is the the roof. So this is going to dry. You can see the two pieces of the roof that I'm using to support this. This is going to dry during the day. And then, wow, look at all that glue in there. Yikes. And then we're almost done. I'll uh, sand it. I'll try to get the roof as level as I can. So if you have a table saw, if you have a miter saw, you're going to get really nice cuts. Uh, if you want to spend the time if you're going to sell these things, I would not throw it together like this. But uh, it's doable. It's a fun project. I'm really happy I'm doing it. I can't wait for it to be finished. Once it's sanded, uh, sanded completely sanded, <clears throat> and the roof on here, which I'm going to mount with screws, because if you don't mount, if you don't leave access, you're not going to be able to open this thing up to clean it. I don't plan on cleaning it. I don't plan on putting it out as a bird. Uh, nest, a bird house, but uh, if you do, you definitely want to put screws on, I would say both sides so that you can get in there and clean it out. Otherwise, there's just no, it's going to be nasty. I'll be back. There it is. It looks pretty nice. I'm impressed. A little bit of uh, sanding required to clean up all this glue and all the uh, dirt. Yeah, I know. That's the glue. That's what it did. I am not a professional. Overall, it looks good. I've got a couple other videos that I'm going to be making. I've got a bird feeder that I'm working on and a another birdhouse. And then I don't know what I'm going to do after that. So what's left is the top, two top pieces. I'm going to drill the hole so I can place the roof over the house. I've got some countersinks that I never use. And then I'm going to countersink the screws. And I'll be back. There it is, everybody. Gaps all over the place. Glue marks all over. It needs to be sanded tomorrow. I accidentally, yes, accident. Oh, on the top, I put two screws over here. So uh, that held the left side to the right side. And I just drilled one hole to mount the top in there <clears throat> with one screw. That way I can take it off 
for cleaning. I don't really think this is going to go outside. I just wanted to build this to see if I could build it and make a video. Oops, yeah, I drilled the hole the wrong way. I originally put it right up to the edge, and then I said, no, you're supposed to have an overhang, an overlapping area. So all of that over there that's going to be sanded, that's the glue marks. Um, somebody's writing to me saying that's a really nice job that you did. Uh, I'm probably going to have to put a screw on the back over here. If, yeah, because this thing could fall off or break off if somebody picks it up this way. So I'll put another screw on over there tomorrow. Um, that's it. Complete with lots of mistakes, lots of, uh, lots of things that I wish I knew how to do better, but I'm not a woodworker. I just wanted to make this to see if it could be done. And if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching, people. Hey, people, this is the final birdhouse with the top. Now, I want to say to end the video, anybody can do this. I screw this thing up over and over and over again. My cuts were not even on the bottom, caused me nothing but problems. And I had to even everything out. My cuts on the side, I didn't really worry about. My 45 degree angle over here, totally off because of the saw and my measuring. And this took a lot of time to get. What I ended up doing is sanding down here, sanding down the sides. I went on the back, I had to sand everything down. You can see now it's a pretty nice fit, but Originally, there were gaps all over the place. This has a little bit more of a gap than I wanted. Not a big issue. It's going to let air in the birds. The bird, I'm not going to use this for the birds. I'll make another one for the birds. This, is, this was a test to see if I could do it. Everything was glued up. Something I learned is you need to wipe the glue up on redwood right away because it's going to get absorbed into the wood and you're probably not going to be able to sand that out. Um, I'm glad I bought redwood. I bought rough redwood. Uh, picket fence pieces and the, it's really rough and then I found out if you sand it down this is beautiful wood it's really nice sand it down on the top my original plan was to put screws on here so that uh, I can remove the top and clean the bird house so I've got two screws over here I had no problem. I was definitely able to line it up. I put a, a measure under here, figured out what the, uh, the space was, and then figured out where I needed to go in here into the board for my measurement, and then I measured the hole, drilled it, hand drill. An, an electric a power drill is easier than a crank old style hand drill. For this, and for this, and for this, and for this. Over here, I screwed this together because my dimensions were so far off. I didn't really trust gluing it. You can see the big gap over there. It took me about a week, including video and traveling back and forth to my mom's house to use her backyard and my saw in the backyard and the power tools. Everybody loves this thing. It's adorable. Most people online are making this with cedar. Spend another $2. Buy the redwood. You'll get a nice product out of it. Very easy to do. It's a challenge. For most of us beginning wood people who really don't know what to do with our wood, and I would suggest making this. If you need all the dimensions, I can give them to you. I believe I said them at the beginning. Most of this, just make it fit for yourself, whatever you want to do.